shall we? Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, I got a 33-day motion on a uh, Jose Diaz Gonzalez. Yes, Your Honor. 21 CF 4187. It was a notice of non filing, so it should be granted. All righty. Well, let me get your appearance for the record, Counsel. Taylor May, on behalf of the Office of the State Attorney. Counsel. Tyler Brands, on behalf of the Office of Public Defender. All right. Nice to meet you both. You as well, Judge. Okay, so granted. Oops. I didn't do this. Oh, and next up would be uh, John Blair Milburn the third, twenty one CF eight one oh two. We also filed a notice of non filing, so it should be granted. All righty. Oh, he did. Going back to Gonzalez, he had another case, um, CF4189. I only have one on the add-on docket today, the 8-7. It's in the, the first. If you read down, it's in the bottom. I thought it was. Yeah, it's in the note part. Okay. Your Honor, do you mind if we pass that one until the end of session? Sure. I don't have any correspondence from the ASA because... On the add-on docket, it only has that one case, All right, and that's I'll in the notes. That one right up here. So yes, Your Honor. I'll remember it. Okay. Next up is uh, twenty-one CF eight five zero three Werner J. Payton. Notice of non-filing, so it should be granted. All right. And uh, following that one is uh, Kevon Lamore Lawson, 21 CF 8440. Notice and on filing, so it should be granted. Granted, got it. Uh, 21 CF 7871, Christopher Wayne Small. Notice and on filing, so granted. Granted, got it. Oh, goodness, here's a name. Uh, 21 CF 8399, Rukia Nadungwa Abdul Rahman. An information was filed yesterday, so denied. Can you say that name? This name? Right here. Well, that's the first one. How about the other one? The Dungwa Abdul Rahman. I think. Uh, okay, let's see. 21 CF. Uh, a five four six Miguel Angel Cato. An information was filed yesterday, so denied. Denied. So I'm holding this one over here to the end of this session. See what happens with that one? Okay. All right. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. This is Paulo Lara, Portuguese interpreter. I have not been sworn yet today. All right. How about raising your right hand, sir? Madam Clerk, would you swear in the interpreter? Do you swear to translate from Portuguese to English, English to Portuguese, truthfully, in these matters here today? 
Yes, I do. Paulo Lara, Portuguese interpreter. Portuguese. Hey, you know, I'm glad you're on there this morning. You know, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, 10 days or so ago, when the whole Afghanistan thing started to fall apart, and they would talk about, you know, getting the people that had worked with the Americans out of Afghanistan, and they kept referring to them as translators. Mm -hmm. Did you hear it? Like NPR, CNN, all the TV stations. Everybody was referring to them as translators. And uh, I'm driving around listening to this stuff, and I'm saying, no, no, no. It's interpreters. Translators <laughs> are Star Trek. Interpreters we, are the people. That's true. We, we get a lot of that confusion around that verbiage everywhere. It's just that people confuse. Translation is basically the written document. Mm -hmm. Never you prefer. But that confusion is pretty common. Yeah. Yeah, I got straightened out on that years ago by one of the interpreters from downtown who just sort of stopped me in the middle of a hearing. And she said, uh, you know, we're not translators. Translators are devices on Star Trek. We are interpreters. And I went. <laughs> and since then, that's always in the forefront of my mind because a lot of people still refer to you as a, a translator. That's funny. Uh, oh, yeah, I think of a little black box in Star Trek. That's a translator. It's it's one of those things that sometimes I just you know pick my battles you know like I, I don't correct people on that but you're you're right, absolutely correct. Oh yeah, well my my battles my days are usually pretty boring so I'll I'll pick any old battle doesn't matter how trivial it is. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, case number here is twenty twenty one mm eight or five eight two zero. And, um, sir, would you tell me your name, please? Uh, o caso é o número 2021-MM5820-AO. Uh, senhor, o senhor pode me dizer o seu nome, por favor? My name is André Luiz Ferreira Bloodworth. Uh, você pode repetir o último sobrenome, por favor? Bloodworth. Como André, que você André soletra? Luiz Ferreira Bloodworth. Como que você soletra o seu último nome? B L O O D W O R T H. Perfeito. My name is André Luiz Ferreira Bloodworth. Uh, sir, you are charged with trespass on property after warning. A senhora você está sendo acusado de ter é, invadido uma propriedade depois de ter recebido um alerta. That is a misdemeanor of the first degree. Uh, do you understand what you're charged with? Este é um delito de primeiro grau. O senhor entende a acusação que, da qual você está sendo acusado? Não, eu não entendo. Eu estava na minha empresa e fui até o Recursos Humanos e, de repente, alguém me chamou a polícia. E isso acontece todo dia porque eles falam que eu sou um não deportado. Uh, no, I don't understand. Uh, I actually was at my, my company working and then I went to human resources and then they call the police and then this happens every day because they say that I'm deported. Yeah, well, I reviewed the affidavit and the affidavit, the allegations in the affidavit um, confirm that probable cause exists for the charge of trespass after warning. Bom, eu revisei aqui a declaração e a alegação de que você acabou trespassando ou invadindo a propriedade depois de ter sido uh, acusado ou recebido um aviso. Eu de decido que tem uma causa provável para isso, essa acusação. Now, it says here that you live in Orlando, is that correct? Diz aqui que você mora em Orlando, é correto? Sim, eu moro em Orlando, mas eu desconheço que eu invadi uma casa sem autorização. Uh, yes, I live in Orlando, but I am not aware that I trespassed a, a house or a property without uh, any uh, authorization. Okay. And how long have you lived in Orlando, sir? E quanto tempo você vive em Orlando, senhor? Uh, my first time. Meu primeiro tempo em Orlando foi 29 de agosto de 2018. Uh, a primeira my first entrada time. nos Estados Unidos, sim. Uh, 28, my first time 28 Orlando, 29 de agosto de 2018. Uh, my first time, uh, my first entry into the United States was um, in August 28th or 29th of 2018. I remember. 
sorry. Okay, so you've lived here in Orlando since August of 2018, is that correct? Então você tem vivido aqui em Orlando desde agosto de 2018, correto? Sim. Sempre minha residência foi em Orlando e algumas vezes eu viajei a trabalho, mas foi só um dia e regressei, nada mais. Ultimamente eu estou morando só em Orlando e minha casa é só aqui. Yes, I have always lived in Orlando. I have traveled before for work, but I traveled and came back. My residence has always been in Orlando. Okay. The reason I was asking him all those questions, today mm -hmm. is I'm considering ROR and him on this charge. Um, my reading of the affidavit, given the language barrier that probably existed down there, this could all be a mistake and confusion. I don't know, but I think based on the nature of the charge and a lack of a record, that ROR would be appropriate at this time. Any uh, objections you want to make to that? No, Your Honor. State has no objections due to the lack of history and the lack of violence within the affidavit. State would, however, ask for a condition of no return to the FedEx. Right. Uh, no caso, uh, a razão pela qual eu estou perguntando é o que eu estou considerando ver se a gente dispensa ou se a gente simplesmente uh, uh, muda essa acusação pelo fato de que a linguagem aqui na declaração não está totalmente clara e pelo fato de poder ter, ter havido uma barreira linguística e também pela natureza da acusação e não ter nenhum histórico com relação a isso, pode ser uma opção. O Estado tem alguma objeção? Não, meritíssimo. Não temos nenhuma objeção com relação a, essa, a, a removermos isso. Now, sir, uh, what all that means is I'm going to release you on your own recognizance. I do see that you qualify for the public defender. Do you understand that? Uh, senhor, o que isso quer dizer é que eu vou te liberar para, para poder uh, fazer a sua defesa e você se qualifica para ter uma pessoa da Defensoria Pública te apresentar. Você está ciente disso? Eu que sim. Because you are charged with a criminal offense, you have a right to an attorney and... Uh, if you would like, I can appoint the office of the public defender to represent you. Uh, porque você está sendo acusado de uma ofensa criminal, você tem direito de ter um advogado. E se você não puder arcar com um, nós podemos te nomear um no escritório da Defensoria Pública. Não tenho dinheiro para isso nesse momento. Eu tenho dinheiro, ah. mas meus cartões foram retidos quando eu entrei aqui. E eu não sei o que dizer. Uh, I don't have money at the moment to, to afford. I have money, but my cards, they were all retained when I got in here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you, and you'll be released on your own recognizance, sir. Uh, stay in touch with your attorney, and uh, your attorney will make sure you know what you got to do and when you got to do it. Então, uhum. neste caso, eu vou te liberar e vou nomear um advogado da Defensoria Pública para você poder falar com ele, para poder te representar, tá? E vou, ele vai te explicar exatamente o que você deve fazer ou não deve fazer. Então, mantenha contato com ele, por favor. Ok. Thank you, sir. This okay. hearing's concluded. Your Honor, is there... Obrigado, senhor. Isso conclui a nossa audiência. Oh, yeah. No return to the FedEx location. Aí você não pode retornar para aquela localidade da FedEx, ok? Ah, uh, was that the only Portuguese case we had? Yes, the rest Well, thank you, Mr. Interpreter. Thank you, Your Honor. Have a great day and a great weekend. You do the same thing. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay, which ones are in this page? How many are there? Not too bad. All right. Yeah, that's right. Third. I missed the day. Good morning, Your Honor. This is Theodore Leal, Spanish interpreter. The interpreter has been previously sworn, Your Honor. Well, thank you, sir. How are you this morning? Doing very well, Your Honor. Thanks, you. Yeah, me too. Somebody told me it was Friday today. Nope, no response. Kind of kills my joke if you don't respond. <laughs> okay, forget that one. Uh, they need the headphones. All right, let's see. Um, Your Honor, uh, I believe they have a headset available. Um, 
But he can connect to unless he wants Yeah, to there's come. usually a headset. Y'all can stick on him. There's a victim coming. She may need the oh, services okay. of the interpreter. Right. We're going to try it without it, huh? Okay. All right. Okay, next case is case number... There's a case number here. What is it? 2021 uh, MM5566. And... Um, uh, Kristen Obet Cruz Torres. Is is that you, sir? Is that Kristen Obet Cruz Torres? Si. Yes. Right. Uh, the charge is um, battery. It's alleged to be a domestic battery. And this is all pursuant to an arrest warrant. Now, the judge signing the arrest warrant found probable cause for the charge of misdemeanor battery. Do you understand that? See. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, um, uh, do you need the interpreter, ma'am? Señor, usted necesita intérprete. Sí. Okay. Yes. And uh, what is your name? ¿Cuál es su nombre, señora? Sherlian Ortiz Torres. Sherlian Ortiz Torres. Ah, okay. Now, Miss Torres, you're the named victim in this case. Do you understand that? Hola, señora Torres. Usted es la víctima mencionada en este caso. Usted ent entiende eso, ¿verdad? Correcto. Correct. All right. As a victim... Uh, you have a right to be heard uh, on uh, what you might like to see the court do in this case. Do you understand that? Como la víctima, usted está en su derecho de ser escuchada y ver que puede hacer el tribunal por usted en su caso. ¿Entiende? Correcto. Correct. All right. And uh, the defendant, uh, Mr. Torres, is your boyfriend. Is that correct? El acusado, el señor Torres, él es su novio, ¿correcto? Correcto. Okay. Correct. Now, he qualifies for what's called pretrial release, which is a, um, a non-monetary form of release. In other words, he doesn't have to post a bond. He can go out of jail on a pretrial release order. Do you understand that? Ahora, él califica para lo que se denomina libertad provisional. Para tal tipo de libertad no se requiere que se pague fianza. Eh, él podría salir de la cárcel, pero estaría sujeto a las órdenes y los requisitos del Departamento de Libertad Provisional. ¿Entiende usted eso? Correcto. ¿Puedo alegar algo? Correct. ¿Can I say something? Certainly. Um, Puesto. Yo estuve llamando porque... Eh, les había comentado que no tengo interés de continuar el caso. Lo quiero dejar como que fue una disputa familiar. Tenemos una menor en común y queremos pre preservar pues, el bienestar de ella. Eh, eh, llevamos cuatro años de relación y quiero tomar esto como que fue una situación en medio de la pandemia que se nos salió del control. Pero no encuentro que haya mayor peligro y verdaderamente no quiero continuar con el caso. No lo quiero ver aquí, quiero que él esté bien y esté afuera. Uh, yeah, I have been calling and I have been trying to uh, give information that I, I do not want to pursue this case. I do not want to continue. All it was, it was a family misunderstanding. We have a child, uh, a girl in common. Uh, we want to, above all, maintain her well-being. Uh, we have our relationship for four years And what happened was just a, a situation that arose from the pandemic. Uh, things got out of control, but there is really no danger per se. And uh, I really do not want to see him here at all. I want him to be free. So you and he live together, is that correct? O sea, que ustedes viven juntos, correcto? Correcto. Somos una familia estable hace cuatro años. Correct. We are a stable family for four years. It sounds like you want me to allow him to come back and live there again. 
Entonces me parece que usted quiere que yo le permita a él que él vuelva y vuelva a vivir con usted allí. Eh, yo creo que eso sería como decisión de nosotros, pero si fuera la oportunidad ya, ya sería algo que tuviéramos que hablar él y yo, pero verdaderamente les agradezco su ayuda, pero no, no quiero continuar con el proceso. Well, yeah, and that's something that he and I will have to have a conversation about, but I would, I would really be appreciative if you allow us that, so that, you know, I, I can just leave this behind. I don't want to continue with this. So, so that we're real clear, are you asking me to let him come home and live with you and your daughter again? Entonces, para que nos quede claro, ¿verdad? Usted entonces nos está pidiendo aquí al tribunal de que le demos permiso a él de que él regrese al hogar viviendo con usted y con su hija. ¿Correcto? Correcto. Yo lo amo mucho y yo soy capaz de perdonar porque somos seres humanos y podemos cometer errores. Uh, yes, I love him a lot and I'm ready to forgive him. We are all human beings and we all make mistakes. Uh, state. Your Honor, you pretty much covered all the questions I was going to ask her. Was she ever sworn in? No. Okay. Señoría, usted ya cubrió todas las preguntas que yo le iba a hacer, pero ella no la ha juramentado, no. Was, was there anything else you wanted to inquire? No, Your Honor. The victim? Algo más que quiera preguntar, no, su señoría. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Torres, you qualify for the services of the public defender as your attorney. Would you like for me to appoint the public defender to represent you? Señor Torre, usted reúne los requisitos para que se le designe un defensor público. ¿Desea usted que yo le designe un defensor público para que lo represente en su causa? Sí. Yes. Okay. Uh, because you qualify, I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. I'm going to direct that you be released. Uh, Pre-trial release, as far as the charges are concerned, I am going to order the following. Uh, no hostile contact with the victim. Uh, you're to consume no alcohol, no drugs, not prescribed for you by your own physician. You're to have no weapons on or about your person, sir. So, entonces, voy a proceder a designarle un abogado público. Usted podrá entonces eh, salir con las condiciones del Departamento de Libertad Provisional. Ahora, en referencia a estos cargos, lo que sí voy a permitir entonces es que vuelva, que tenga contacto, pero que sea contacto sin hostilidades, sin asperezas. Y que se le va a prohibir también pues, el consumo de, de alcohol, de droga, a menos que sean medicamentos uh, recetados por un doctor. Y también se le prohíbe el porte o tenencia de armas. I'm also going to delete um, the no contact with victim that's contained within the warrant that was signed. Y también voy a eliminar esa orden de no contacto con la víctima que había sido previamente firmada en el orden de arresto. So, do you understand all that, sir? Entiende todo esto, señor. Sí, señor. Yes, sir. Okay, well, good luck and um, this hearing's concluded. Entonces, buena suerte y con eso concluye esta audiencia. Gracias, señor. Well, let's see. Uh, next case number is 21MM545. A W, um, and the name is Andrina Sanchez. Now, tell me your full name, ma'am. Andreina Sanchez. Andreina Sanchez. You are uh, charged with battery and it's alleged to be an instance of domestic violence. Do you understand that? Yes. All right. uh, I did read the affidavit. Based on my reading of the affidavit, I do find probable cause for the charge. Okay. 
And I also see you qualify for the services of the public defender. Would you like for me to appoint them as your attorney? Sure. Yes. All right, I'll go ahead and appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in the case. Now, sir, do you need the interpreter? Okay, our witness is going to need the interpreter, too. Uh, tell me your name, sir. Tell me your name, señor. Luis Ortiz. Luis Ortiz. Yes, Ah, there we go. Okay. So, uh, you understand that as the victim, you have a right to be heard on what conditions of release um, I might set for uh, Ms. Sanchez's release? Eh, entiende usted que usted como víctima, usted tiene el derecho de que se le escuche y que sepa del tipo de condiciones de liberación que yo pueda otorgarle a la señora Sánchez. ¿Entiende? Sí, entendí. Yes, I understood. All right. Now, did you want to talk to me about what you might like to see me order? Ahora, usted desea comunicarme algo a, a nosotros al tribunal en lo que usted espera o desearía que se ordene. Ok. Um, mi mayor preocupación aquí son las niñas. Tengo una niña de 4 y 5. So, el propósito que estoy aquí no es para hacer daño a ella. So, he tratado de, por un lazo de tiempo tratar de buscarle ayuda porque veo que su estado emocional cambia mucho y las niñas se están afectando. So, ese es el propósito que estoy no, Ayuda para ella y para la familia. Yeah, well, uh, the purpose, the reason why I'm here today is not to hurt her, hurt her case in any way whatsoever. Uh, we have a, we have uh, our daughters, four and five years old, and what I'm trying to do is basically get some help. I'm, I'm trying to get some help for us as a family because of her emotional states and. Because of her emotional state, the, the children are getting scared, too. Okay, so um, there is help possible, but in order for the court to be in a position to order any of that kind of help, it's really going to be up to you to decide whether or not you want to cooperate and go forward with the case. Bueno, eh, hay ayuda posible, pero para eso usted tendría que tomar la decisión de cooperar y de proceder y seguir adelante con este caso. Okay. So, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions to kind of figure out where you're at at, at this point. Okay. Um, uh, do you want her to be able to come home at this point? Bueno, hace entonces un par de preguntas para saber cuál es su situación, ¿verdad? Eh, ¿Usted desea que yo le permita a ella, le dé permiso de que ella regrese a la casa a estas alturas? Si su comportamiento cambia, pues claro que sí, en mi familia, mi esposa. Yes, yes, if her behavior changes, you know, she's, she's, she's family, she's my wife. Ok. I, I can order... Uh, no hostile contact, which would mean she'd be able to come home and have contact with, with you and your daughters, uh, but there could be no fighting. If there was, and the police got called again and came out, she would most likely come back to jail. Lo que yo podría hacer es dar una orden de que se le permita ella tener contacto con usted, pero tiene que ser un contacto sin hostilidades. Entonces, de ese modo, ella podría volver a la, a la casa y ella podría tener contacto eh, ya en su casa con usted, con su hija, pero no puede haber ningún tipo de, de, de peleas ni, ni asperezas, porque si eso llega a suceder y la policía tiene que intervenir, entonces ella va a volver otra vez aquí a la cárcel. Do you understand that, sir? ¿Entiende eso, señor? Sí. Yes. Ok. So, does that sound like something you want me to do? ¿Eso le parece que es algo que usted quiere que yo ordene? ¿Así? Sería bien. That would be fine. Ok. 
So let her come home, just no fighting, right? Entonces permitirle que vuelva a casa, pero sin estar peleando. Okay. Eso también lo que ella quiera decir, porque eso es decisión de ella también. Also, it, it depends on what she wants to say as well, because that's her decision too. No, sir, it is not her decision too. It is your decision and my decision. Okay. No, señor, no es decisión de ella, es decisión mía y decisión suya. Ok, pues no tengo problema que ella regrese a la casa. I have no problem with her coming back home. Ok. All right, now, um, you said you had two daughters? Two and one coming for, she has pregnant four months. Che, oh, perdón, ella tiene cuatro meses, so también viene otro en camino. She's four months pregnant, so there's another baby on the way. Ah, uh, okay. Um, so, Miss Sanchez, um, we're talking about you being able to go home to be with your family. Do you understand that? Señora Sanchez, estamos aquí hablando de la posibilidad de que usted vuelva al hogar para que esté con su familia. ¿Usted entiende eso? Sí. Yes. Okay, do you understand that if there's any more fighting and the police get called again, that it's almost certain that you would be the one that would come back to jail. Ahora, ¿entiende usted que si llega a haber más peleas y de nuevo se llama a la policía, lo más seguro es que usted vuelva otra vez a la cárcel? Sí. Yes. Okay. Um, Your Honor, just for the record, uh, state objects to no hostile contact. The victim testified that the children are scared and that he only wanted her home if her behavior or mental state changed. At this point, we can't determine if that actually happened. And arguably, this case is an ag bat with a deadly weapon. She threw boiling water and rice at him. Um, I understand that it came in as a misdemeanor bat DV. However, arguably, it is an ag bat with a deadly weapon. So I understand the victim's testimony. Did you want to ask wait, wait, the victim something? Uh, one moment, uh, Your Honor. Uh, sí, yo, la Fiscalía está presentando esta protesta Uh, a que se le permita contacto, uh, que se permita el contacto con hostilidad. Um, eh, tomo, eh, ya mencionó la víctima de que los niños estaban eh, asustados, asustados, eh, entonces no se puede determinar en sí si su conducta va, va a poder cambiar. Hay que tomar en cuenta que le arrojó agua hirviente con arroz y a pesar de que eso se anotó como delito menor eh, es, eso constituye un caso más, más grave que eso porque eso puede considerar que es un arma mortífera sí, yes, señoría right señor usted le tiene temor a su ¿Usted le tiene temor a su esposa? Puedo decir un poco. Well, I would say a little. Like potentially would happen again? ¿Debe usted que si ella volviese a casa, algo potencialmente así pudiese ocurrir otra vez? Mm, no creo. I don't believe so. Your Honor, My previous argument regarding state subjecting to no hostile contact, um, he stated that he is a little scared. He's testified that children being scared and seemed to hesitate um, when he was asked if he wanted her to come home due to her behavior and mental state. He said she could come home if those changed. However, she'd be released today. The court has no determination on whether those changed. Uh, but given his testimony that he's scared and the children are scared, Uh, state would object to no hostile contact. I understand it's otherwise within your discretion. However, at this point, I think it would be best for a cooling off period that could always be modified at a later time downtown. Sí, señoría, yo repito, voy reiterando mi objeción, mi protesta. Eh, él tenía, se le vio que tenía cierta, cierta duda uh, en su testimonio. Eh, él había dicho que si ella volvía, que si cambiaba la conducta de ella, el estado mental, pero no hay manera realmente de determinar si su estado, el estado mental de ella ha cambiado o no ha cambiado. 
eh, en este caso, si ella sería liberada, sería liberada hoy mismo. Quizás lo que mejor que se puede hacer es dejar un periodo para que las cosas se calmen un poco, pero eso lo dejo yo a discreción del juez. Counsel, did you want to be heard on this? Abogado, ¿quiere decir algo? Uh, Your Honor, based on uh, victim testimony, alleged victim testimony, he, he would prefer contact to keep the family together. I, I wouldn't, I don't know if Ms. Sanchez would qualify for pretrial release. Um, that's enough to um, persuade Your Honor to, to allow no hostile contact. Bueno, yo no sé, su señoría, si sería eh, suficiente esto para persuadir a su señoría de que permita contacto, pero es contacto eh, sin hostilidad. Well, uh, given the fact that Ms. Sanchez doesn't seem to be really engaged in the hearing today. Um, hey. Go ahead, sir. So, sorry, Your Honor. Pero tomando en cuenta que la señora Sánchez eh, no parece estar, sentirse incluida en esta audiencia. You know, a cooling off period might be the right thing. So, um, I'll set the bond at 500. Uh, Ma'am, you're going to be a, uh, ordered to have no contact with the victim. That would be your husband. You're to maintain a separate residence from the victim, your husband. Uh, you're to consume no alcohol, no drugs, not prescribed for you by your own physician. You're to have no weapons on or about your person as a condition of release. Uh, señor, eh, dado el hecho uh, de lo que hemos visto, creo que sí es, es eh, preferible que haya un periodo de que las cosas se calmen, ¿verdad? Se le van a poner la fianza para que salga bajo fianza de 500 dólares, eh, eh, se le va a prohibir el contacto con la víctima, que es su esposo, eh, y se le va a pedir que tenga residencia por separado, uh, y se le va a prohibir también el uso de alcohol y de drogas. Ok, so that'll be that. This hearing's concluded. Thank you. Your Honor, is there a one-time return with law yes. enforcement for her to obtain any of yeah, the personal I, items? I can let her come back one time in the company of the law enforcement officer to pick up her personal things. Sí, puede volver una sola vez en compañía de la Fuerza Pública para recoger sus efectos personales. And I'll order that as well. Eso será la orden también. Thank you. Gracias. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry you know, the, the, the interpreter is required in one of the courtrooms, but your owner can call back again and somebody else will pick up. Okay, thanks. You're welcome, your honor. How weird was that? That was a little strange, wasn't it? The yeah, Romero, Spanish interpreter on the line, already sworn in today. Well, thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, I do have a quick question. Do we have Winter Park and the VRC on the line? Well, you got the BRC. I don't know about Winter Park. You got Winter I, Park also. Can you just yes. Winter Park? Back? Uh, uh, actually, I'm going to have to disconnect completely. And, uh, well, hold on. Maybe I... That is Winter Park. Eh? How'd that happen? In call. All right. That was strange. Yeah, more than likely. More than likely. Good morning. This is Dalia Romero, Spanish interpreter on the line, hey. already sworn in. Hi, Your Honor. Sorry about that. Every once in a while, two calls come in at the same time. Uh -huh. And if we picked up, and I ended up with both, so I had to disconnect. That was the only way I know how. <laughs> yeah, and whoever's in Winter Park would always take a second seat <laughs> for me, right? <laughs> you would, that was Judge Dubois, I, I you, believe. <laughs> you would always pick it up for me and let just let Winter Park set up there and cool their heels. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice to hear your voice, Your Honor. Oh, you too. Always a pleasure. Uh, the case number is 2021-CT-1945, and um, 
This is me. Uh, tell me your name, sir. Miguel Ayala. Miguel Ayala. All right. Um, looking at paperwork, sir, that says you failed to appear on a, an expired driver's license charge in Division 83, that court issued a warrant and uh, set a bond at $150. Do you understand that? Uh, Your Honor, there was an offer from the state of an adjudication of guilt prior time served. I did have a chance to send a piece of paperwork back to those in Boulder. Um, I believe Mr. Milton wishes to enter a plea today of no contest. To the, um, the, the expired DL charge? The failure to appear. The expired DL, Your Honor. Oh, okay. yes. yes. So y'all are all comfortable with that? Stay you comfortable with the plea on that? Yes, Your Honor, the offer I conveyed was an adjudication of credit time served. And if he's otherwise playing today, the state would ask that you take no action on his out on bond cases at this time if he pleads to expire DL today. All right. Okay, Mr. Uh, Beltran, would you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you shall give in this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? See. Yes. All right. um, I'm told that you're going to enter a plea. You can put your hand down, by the way. Uh, I'm told that you want to enter a plea of no contest to the expired driver's license charge. Is that correct? See. Yes. And do you believe it's in your best interest to enter that plea to the charge today? See. Yes. All right. You said an adjudication, right, State? All right. And uh, is there anything you want to tell me about yourself or the case before I proceed? No. No. All right. I'll find the plea is free and voluntary. I'll accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty of the charge, sentence you to time served. You will be ordered to pay court costs and any other costs that are associated with the case. Uh, you'll be given 180 days to pay those in full uh, to the clerk. And I'll take no action on the two out on bond cases. Madam Clerk, was the public defender appointed in that case? Uh, Is the public defender so, appointed yeah. in this case? Well, yes. Yeah, previously appointed. So, uh, any questions, Mr. Beltran? No. No. All right. Thank you, sir. Let's see. Next case number is 2018-CT-8667, and sir, what is your name? Davislai Gonzalez. Davislai Gonzalez. Davislai Gonzalez. Uh, Mr. Gonza Gonzalez, I have a uh, capius here that was issued when you failed to appear for an arraignment on a driving while license suspended charge. Do you understand that? No. Yes. And I also see that you qualify for the services of the public defender. Would you like to have me appoint them to represent you? Yes. All right. Now, the court that issued that capius on failure to appear has indicated that you should be held no bond pending further order of that court. Do you understand that? Yes. All right. So I'll stay your status at no bond. And um, do we have any dates for these, like status or anything? Arraignment. Well, you can't bond. It's no bond. 
So next step in your case is you'll be set for an in-jail arraignment, um, which it looks like you'll be at alone. So understand? Yes. You understand you're being represented by the Office of the Public Defender, is that correct? Yes. Any questions or comments you have, you're going to want to direct to your attorney when you get an opportunity. Thank you, sir. Good luck. This hearing's concluded. I don't think I could have messed with that one anyway. I wonder how that would play into it. How do you think that would play into it, State? He's got a no bond on a capius, a misdemeanor capius for failing to appear. He's also, He's also classified as a violent felony offender of special concern. Yes, Your Honor. So would the same rules apply there in terms of uh, nobody but the court who issued the capius can really do anything with this case? Yes, Your Honor. Even though it's a misdemeanor? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the uh, biggest mistake that people make down here when they're doing this stuff is not noticing that violent felony offender thing. I personally did that many times until I got straightened out on it. So, uh, next case number is there's one in there somewhere 2021 CF 9789. And then there's additional case 2008 CT 9743. So, tell me your name, sir. Hugo uh, Rodriguez Reyes. Hugo Rodriguez Reyes. Hugo Rodriguez Reyes. All right. Well, sir, in um, the felony matter, you're charged with lewd or lascivious molestation. Looks like victim over 12. Under 12, Your Honor. That under? Yes, Your Honor. Yeah. Correct. Under 12, which is a um, punishable by life felony, if I remember correctly. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. And uh, then in addition to that, you have a failure to appear in 2008 CT 9743. And that was, it doesn't really say what kind of hearing it was, but uh, when you failed to appear, uh, that court back in 2018 set your bond at $2,000. Do you understand? Mr. Barrett, can you hear me? Yes, I understand. I also see that you qualify for the public defender, sir. Would you like me to appoint the public defender for you in both cases? Okay, see. see. I believe so. Okay. Yes. I'm going to appoint the Office of the Public Defender in both cases. So he's currently no bonded on the uh, molestation charge. Um, state, you want to be heard on the issue of bond? Yes, Your Honor. Given that it is a life offense, state is asking to be awarded no bond pending an Arthur hearing downtown. So you're requesting that I stay at no bond? Stay at no bond, Your Honor. Counsel, do you want to be heard? Your Honor, pending that Arthur hearing with his attorney. He is classified as a violent felony offender of special concern, in addition to all that. So I'll find that it's appropriate um, to continue to hold him a no bond at this time, uh, based on the fact that it is a punishable by life felony, and we're really not set up to figure out what ways we could protect the victim or victims if he were released. A, a further, more detailed hearing on the issue of bond will be appropriate. So no bond on the molestation charge, 2000 on the warrant, Yes, Your Honor. On both cases. Um, just for the record, um, he failed to appear at arraignment on 7 17 2008. At a what? Center. I'm sorry? He failed to appear at what? On 7 17 2008 at an arraignment. Okay. Since your paperwork did not say anything. Um, and the only condition the state's requesting on the Luden Lascivious is no contact with the victim or witnesses, given that he's held on no bond. There's yep. no other conditions that need to be set at this time. So I'll add the provision that you're to have no contact. Uh, with the victim or victim, sir, uh, as a condition. That means no calling them from the jail, no contacting them through third parties. And um, 
I see you had uh, no contact and victims and witnesses, Your Honor. Victims and witnesses. All right. Thank you, sir. This hearing is concluded. I think that's all we got, Madam Interpreter. Well, thank you, Your Honor. You have a good weekend. Hey, I almost called you Madam Translator. <laughs> it's okay. Hey, you know me better. I'm not going to throw a fit. <laughs> I think you're the one that straightened me out years ago. What am I talking about? Okay. Well, have you a have good a day. Weekend. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you, Your Honor. You do the same. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay, let's see. Next case number is uh, 2021 CF 9787. That is uh, Demetrius Lavon Hunter. Um, morning, sir. What's your name? Demetrius Lavon Hunter. How you doing? Morning. I'm all right. Um, you're charged with um, aggravated assault with a weapon as a incident of domestic violence and then there's a second charge um now that's charge of felony and then there's a misdemeanor charge 21 mo 968 and that is disorderly conduct and it appears that you qualify for the public defender would you like for me to appoint the public defender to re represent you yes sir okay i'll do that pd is appointed um, okay, uh, state care to be heard on the issue of bond in the uh, DV case. Your Honor, state we just asked for a reasonable bond, um, given the facts in the case, given that a firearm was allegedly used, and given his history, he did recently plead to other charges that involved firearms. Um, so state's just requesting a reasonable bond, given the level of felony and the fact that a firearm was used. State's asking for right. thirty five hundred. Council, did you want to be heard on the issue of bond? It's in your discretion, Your Honor. We always request a reasonable bond as well. Sure, sure. So, okay, on the domestic violence case, uh, I'm going to set your bond at $2,500. Now, you, sir, are going to be ordered to have no contact with the victim. Yes, sir. Uh, you're to maintain a separate residence from the victim. Yes, sir. You're to consume no alcohol, no drugs, not prescribed for you by your own physician. You're to have no weapons on or about your person. Now, in addition to no contact with the victim, also going to be ordering no contact with the uh, any witnesses in the case, because apparently there are some to that in the uh, disorderly conduct charge. I'll set your bond on the disorderly conduct charge at one hundred dollars. Thank you, sir. Any questions? No, sir. You understand who your lawyer is? Yes, sir. Okay. Any questions or comments you have, you want to direct them to your attorney. Our, now, on the uh, disorderly conduct, all we need is no contact with witnesses. And then that and the other ones on the uh, domestic case. Okay. Let's see. Next case number is 2021 CF 9784. What's your name? My name is Tamaz Layton. All right, Mr. Layton. You are charged with aggravated assault with a firearm, and then you're also charged, you got a second count, which is a battery charge. The ag assault charge is a, a felony. The battery charge is a misdemeanor. And looks like you qualify for the public defender. Would you like to have the public defender appointed to represent you? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll appoint the public defender for you. Now, um, I got a PC issue on the firearms charge based on the allegations in the affidavit, not on the um, um, domestic charge, the uh, battery charge, but on the uh, firearm charge. Ag assault with a firearm? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. The only thing the state can point to, Your Honor, is the victim advised three days ago when the argument got physical. He punched her, told her he was going to kill her, drew a gun from his pocket, and put it to the side of her head by her temple. That is that the information that comes from her mother? No, Your Honor. The, there's testimony is that from directly her from her. Yes, Your Honor. That's at the bottom of the page. Um, the that is the information from her mother. She was adamant 
that he put a firearm to her daughter's head. She explained he told her this information over the phone. She was scared to tell deputies. It was after Mr. Layton was in custody, law enforcement on scene with the victim. That is when she advised the following. It goes on to the second page. Okay, well, I see. It. Advised deputies who were still on the scene that she had, in yes. fact, been threatened by Tamez with his firearm. Okay. The victim advised more information once he left the scene due to being scared. All right. Well, that, that satisfies my probable cause issues. All right. Um, so, Mr. Layton, um, I'm finding probable cause for the ag assault with a firearm and the battery charge. As to the aggravated assault with a firearm, uh, I'll set your bond at uh, $2,500. You're going to be ordered to have no contact with the victim. You're to maintain a separate residence from the victim. You're to consume no alcohol, no drugs, not prescribed for you by your own physician. You're to have no weapons on or about your person. I'm going to order that any weapons that you own or regularly have in your possession, you are ordered to turn over to the Orange County Sheriff's Department within 24 hours of your release. The receipt that you receive from them is to be filed with a clerk's office showing that you have, in fact, surrendered the weapons. Uh, and then as to the battery charge, I'll set an additional bond at um, $150, and uh, you'll have the same conditions associated with that. It's also no contact with any witnesses, sir. All right. Thank you, sir. This hearing is concluded. All right, next case number is 2021-CF9462. This is a um, arrest warrant, or first of all, what's your full name? Renata Sims. Ah, okay, Ms. Sims. Um, it's an arrest warrant for violating a uh, no-contact order. Do you understand that? Ma'am? No, you got to use your voice. No, I don't. Okay. It's an arrest warrant that a judge downtown reviewed, Judge Whitehead, as a matter of fact, and found probable cause that you had violated the previous no contact order entered in the uh, battery case by having uh, contact with the victim. Do you understand that? I, I understand that. But okay, I'm not asking you if you agree with it. Just asking you if you understand what you're being held on, okay? And uh, and then, of course, you're out on bond on the uh, battery charge. Now, you do qualify for the public defender. Would you like for me to appoint them to represent you? Yes. All right, I'll do that. PD is appointed. State? Yes, Your Honor. State's requesting a bond on the... Uh, violating of the court order. The state's requesting that you revoke her bond on the bat DV. Uh, she was ordered to have no contact on July 1st of 2021 before Judge Gimson, before this court. That no contact order states that she's not allowed to be within 500 feet of the residence and that she may, not re she may return one time with law enforcement to obtain personal belongings. The allegations in the affidavit is that she returned by herself and then became aggressive when the victim returned home. Um, so she is in violation of the no contact order that she signed on July 1st, 2021, as well as what was explained to her by Judge Gibson in court that day. So given that she is in violation, state would just ask for a bond on the violation and to revoke her out on bond back DV. Was she originally granted the, the right to return one time with law enforcement for stuff? Yes, Your Honor. It was... She came back without law enforcement? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. According to the... Affidavit. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Um, counsel, same same thing? Reasonable bond? Reasonable bond as well as perhaps um, right. in your discretion, uh, just reiterating the terms of the no contact order and mm -hmm. decide to take action on the auto bond case, a reasonable bond there as well. Yeah. Um, okay. This is going to be kind of bifurcated. As to the case that you're out on bond on, the DV case, uh, you currently have a bond of $500, which I'm going to revoke and uh, order that you be held no bond on that one pending a bond hearing before uh, the court in Division 50, which presently is Judge Shoemaker. As to the new charge, uh, probable cause already having been found uh, by Judge Whitehead when he signed the warrant, 
I'll set your bond on that one at $2,500. Now, uh, I'm going to enter the same conditions that you had in the DV case, and that is no contact with the victim, maintain a separate residence from the victim, consume no alcohol, no drugs not prescribed for you by your own physician, you're to have no weapons on or about your person, and we'll leave it up to Judge Shoemaker's uh, discretion as to what he does in terms of bond or conditions of release on the DV case, the bond that I revoked. Understand? Okay, what don't you understand? No, I got no bond? Yeah. So when do I go to court? Um, whenever your attorney sets up a bond hearing with Judge Shoemaker. Good luck. You didn't order a one-time return again, correct, Your Honor? Okay. I'm usually good for one of those, but if they if they blow it on the one-time return, then that's it. Yes, Your Honor. I believe she obtained her belongings. I just want to make sure. Okay. Let's see. Good morning. What's your name? Whitney Deaver. All right. Case number 2021 MM5835. The charge, or two charges actually, petty theft and battery as an incident of domestic violence. I did review the affidavit. I do find probable cause for both charges. And um, let's see. I don't see an affidavit for the public defender. Is it your intent to talk to a private attorney? Uh, no, I was speaking for myself. Huh? I was speaking for myself. Well, I understand that, but do you intend to represent yourself in the case? Mm hmm Have you ever done that before? Ever been to the dentist? Not that, not that long. You've never been to the dentist? Yeah, I have. Okay. Why'd you go to the dentist? I had braces. You had a what? I have braces in my mouth right now. I was just okay. about to go. So you needed braces. How come you didn't just put them on at home yourself? I have braces on. Yeah, but how come you didn't just put them on at home yourself? Why'd you go to the dentist? Because that's what they're there for, huh? And they're good at what they do, you hope. They're kind of experts at it. So so you figure you can't do your own dental work, but you can do a lawyer's work? I was, the only, like, I was there and the person was there at the time. I didn't hear what you said. I was there and the person was there at the time. A lawyer I understand. And see, you're already messing up because you're starting to talk about the facts of your case. And if you had a lawyer representing you, the lawyer would, first of all, have a cardiac because you were doing that. And then secondarily, run over there real quick and tell you to quit talking about the case because that's you potentially giving evidence against yourself. And it would be used against you. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So you want to reconsider the lawyer thing? Yeah. Okay. You think maybe the PD would be a good idea? I don't get in trouble. Okay. Well, I'm going to try to help you not to get in any more trouble, okay? So um, you want me to appoint the public defender for you? Yes, sir. All right, I'm going to appoint the public defender for you. Uh, that dentist thing gets them every time. Um, well, there's this big, long speech that somebody wrote once upon a time for one of those inquiries, Ferretta inquiry, I guess is what it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, you sit here for 15 minutes, and by the time you've said the first three sentences, nothing else arrives. And so it just becomes totally confusing, but good. So I've appointed the PD for you. Uh, now, uh, I don't see that she qualifies for pretrial release. So as to the petty theft charge, uh, having found probable cause, I'll set a bond on that at $100. On the battery charge, I'll set a bond of $500. Now, you're going to be ordered to have no contact with the victim, which I take it is your mother. Yeah, they told me that. No contact with the victim. Mm -hmm. Maintain a separate residence from the victim. Consume no alcohol, no drugs not prescribed for you by your own physician. You'd have no weapons on or about your person as a condition of release. And uh, I don't know that there are any witnesses, but if there are, you'd have no contact with the witnesses as well. Your Honor, state's requesting no contact with a co-defendant. Uh, yeah, no contact with the co-defendant, who I think is your girlfriend. Excuse co me? Co-defendant is your girlfriend. What's that? Miss Boyd. What's the code offended? The other person that was with you when yes. all of this occurred. Yes, sir. So that's your girlfriend. Yes, sir. Okay, you're to have no contact with her as a condition of your release. All right. All right. So you understand the PD's representing you. Uh, I know the urge, 
to speak for yourself. But your best bet is to run anything you want to say or ask by your attorney before you say it to anybody else. Anybody else, okay? Yes, sir. All right, good luck. Um, Pre-trial, do you know if there's a fugitive warrant out of Texas? There isn't. Okay, thank you. Out of where, Texas? Texas. Ooh. Bad place to have a warrant. Okay. And what's your name? Out of Fraser. All right, Mr. Fraser. Case number is um, 2021-MM5796. Understand? Yes, sir. That much? In that case, you're charged with battery, and it's alleged to be domestic in nature. Uh, uh, you do not qualify for the public defender, sir, based on your affidavit that you filled out. So you're going to wind up having to talk to a private attorney, and then if you find you can't afford the private attorney, you can I, always come back and apply for I, the public can defender. Can I ask why don't I... Uh, the amount you make money? Seven hundred a week is like yeah, no dependent. Yeah, so like I said, you're going to have to try to talk to a private attorney, and then when you find out what they want to charge you, the way it works is you do that, and if you find you just can't afford it, then you can ask the court to reconsider appointing a public defender next time you're in court. Okay. Understand? Sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I, I'm really like you're kind of bouncing like a 13 year old that needs to go like to the I'm bathroom. I'm getting. I'm really getting bullied, bro. Okay, calm down. Calm down. You're going to survive it. So, um, but uh, he does qualify for pretrial release. So, uh, hi. What's your name? Hi, I'm Mikaela Garza. And. Um, It says here you're from Atlanta, is that correct? Yes, sir. Is that where you live, Atlanta? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, let's see. So, um, uh, Ms. Garza, did you want to talk to me about this? Um, in terms of, like, what? Well, I mean, you, you've been sitting there while I talked to the other victims. You heard what I asked them, right? Yeah. So, um can you stand still? I'm so sorry. You're yeah. making me seasick. <laughs> so, uh, do you all live together? Um, um, sometimes we do, yeah. We have an apartment in Atlanta. You have no what? We have an apartment in Atlanta. Oh, you do? So you live together in Atlanta? Yes. All right. How do you feel about um, me releasing uh, Mr. Frazier under the pretrial release program as opposed to making him post a uh, monetary bond. Um, what is monetary? Can you explain each one? Money. You yeah, I know bond monetary. Out of jail, you know, by paying some money either to the jail or to a bondsman. And then the, what would the other one be? The other one is doesn't involve money. Okay, yeah. So then the first one. So you think that's good? Mm -hmm. You can live with that? Mm -hmm. And as far as going back to Atlanta, is it your desire to go back to your living arrangement? I mean, yeah, I love him. He's my boyfriend, and things definitely got out of hand. Um, I don't want him to think I'm bullying him, but it is just like you do have to, there's consequences for your actions, and I feel like this was a consequence that he needed to go through so he can understand not to do it again. Uh, yeah, I think this kind of a trip and a night here mm -hmm. um, probably does a whole lot more good than we give it credit for in terms of making a person understand that there are consequences for your actions. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So you want him out and you want to live together once again, is that correct? Yeah, I love him. You have no objection to the pretrial release program? No. Okay. State, did you uh, have any questions? No, Your Honor. State would just ask for bond in conjunction with PTR, given that he's not from Florida and he does have out-of-state arrest history. Yeah, let's see. Out-of-state. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to authorize your release, pre-trial release. I'm going to order that you have no hostile contact with the victim. You fight, please show up, you go back to jail. You understand? 
You are to consume no alcohol, no drugs, not prescribed for you by your own physician. You're to have no weapons on or about your person, sir. So all of that clear? Yes, sir. And you're going to be talking to a lawyer on your own. You understand that? No, sir. You're not getting a lawyer appointed here today, so you're going to need to talk to a private attorney. What does that mean? A private attorney? Is he also able to return to Atlanta, Your Honor? He's, he's really nervous. Your Honor, is he allowed to return back to Georgia? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I just wanted to make sure it's ordered for PTR purposes. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not uh, limiting him to in his travels back home. Thank you. Something about both of them. They were just kind of all over the place. He, with him, it would have been anything he had in his system would have been flushed by now. Huh? Okay. Oh, well. Let's see, next case number is 2021 MM5833. And what is your name, sir? Joseph Gerver. Mr. Gerver, you're charged with battery. It's um, alleged to be a domestic battery. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. And it uh, looks like you qualify for the public defender. Would you like for me to appoint them to represent you? Y yes, sir. All right, sir, I'll do that. Appoint the public defender. And let's see. Good morning. Good morning. What's your name? Annette Clark. Uh, oops, thank you, ma'am. There you go. Qualifies for PTR? No. So you said you were Renette Gerver? Clark, yes. I'm married. Okay, so, but Renette, you're also known as Renette Gerver? Yes. Okay. All right, this is your brother? Yes. Okay, you guys live together? We did. We did. I I left the house two weeks ago. He threatened to kill me. Okay. Um, And we called the police. They baker act him for 24 hours, and they released him. And upon his release... He came home in a rage saying that the police agreed in him killing me. They just told him he was going about it the wrong way. And from there, me and my husband, my three kids, and my dog, we left the house. And right now, I am homeless. I'm displaced because... Whose house was it that you left? My mom's house. Okay, so you, your family, and you, and your brother were all living in your mom's house. Right. He was in jail for two years. He just got out. All right. Well, is it your desire to go back to that house and live again? Right now, my family's displaced, but because he's there, we can't go back there. Well, I'm talking about going back there with him not being there. Yeah, he can't be there. I don't want no contact with him. I don't want him okay. to terrorize my family for the last year. It's just out of control. I got you. Got you. So, um, I think I understand what you're asking. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, having found probable cause uh, for the battery charge, he, he doesn't actually qualify for PTR. He did, but they updated, and he doesn't qualify for it now. So I'm going to set your bond uh, at $1,000, sir. I'm going to order that you are to have no contact with your sister. So now what does that mean? That means if she's at your mother's house, you can't go there. Do you understand? Yes, yes, sir. And uh, she apparently is going back there. So um, you can't go there. No contact. Your Honor, the state would ask for a no return to that address. Yeah, and uh, I'll just enter a general no return to the scene of the offense order. So Please. if you go back, you come back Please. to jail. You understand? Please. Thank you. And I see What? I just wanted to say my part. Well, um, I've appointed I've appointed an attorney for you, and I want you to direct your comments and questions to your attorney. So, it's um, no contact with the victim, no contact with the witnesses, no return to the scene of the offense. You are um, uh, to maintain a separate residence from the victim. I'm gonna keep out. I'm gonna keep okay. the court for now. They've been staying at my mom's house for a whole year. As a condition of release. 
You're to have no weapons on or about your person. You're to consume no alcohol and no drugs not prescribed for you by your own physician. Yes, yes sir. So no, no going back, no matter what you think. But I'm just telling you, my mom kicked him out. The, the dude stayed at my mom's house for a whole year. He didn't work. They went in my mom's account. They, they, they forged their name on my mom's uh, of, uh, mortgage. They, they financed a $3,000 bed under my mom's name. They pretended that they bought the bed. And then she, she took my mom to a car dealer. My mom's Haitian. She, she don't speak no English. And so what she did was she manipulated my mom. She made my mom sign the car. The car, the, the tag on the car was two years outdated. I said, Is your mom competent? She, she speak no English. Like she, they, they, they've been taking advantage. Okay, they, they've been my taking advantage. Of stop. They've been taking advantage of my mom. And this dude, no lie, there's something creepy about the dude. So what he has been doing is he been watching my mom babysit the kids. So it's kind of strange that he doesn't, it's, it seems like, okay, we conduct an investigation. If you're my sister, you're supposed to stand with me and say, like, Sir, I, sir. I don't want to uh, go there, but y'all know what time it is. I'm right. going to stop right there. The I'm court. Take my family. I used to watch her when she was. This hearing's family. concluded. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry. Thank you. God bless you, sir. I used to watch her when she was in Paris. I just want the best for them. Well. Okay. I did. It's probably the next one, isn't it? Let's see. Good morning. What's your name? Salter. I'm going to have to speak up, please. Danielle Salter. Okay. All right, Ms. Salter, in case um, 2021 MM5834, um, you're charged with assault as an incident of dating violence and also battery as an incident of dating violence. Um I did review the affidavit. I do find probable cause for both of the charges. It does look like you qualify for the public defender. Would you like for me to appoint them to represent you? Yes. All right. So the PD is appointed. Uh, there is no victim here. And so even though you qualify for PTR, you can't be released PTR without the court hearing from the victim first. So. As to the uh, assault charge, I'll set a bond at uh, $100. As to the battery charge at $500, you're going to be ordered to have no contact with the victim or victims as a condition of release, no contact with any witnesses as a condition of release. Um, you're to maintain a separate residence from the victim or victims. You're to consume no alcohol, no drugs not prescribed for you by your own physician and you're to have no weapons on or about your person. You understand all of that? Yes. Okay. Now, you understand I've appointed the public defender for you, so any questions or comments you have, safest thing for you is just direct all that to your attorney, okay? All right. Good luck. Your Honor, is there a one-time return? Yeah. Do you need to go back to get your stuff? Do you need to go back to the place to pick up your personal property? The uh, place is in my name. He's gone. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm not ordering you not to return to the scene of the offense. I'm simply saying as long as he's not there, you can be there. But if he's there, you can't go there. Understand? You, you, use your voice. Yes. Okay. So, um, you know, it's up to you. If he's there and you show up, you're going back to jail. All right. Good luck. Yeah, doesn't need it. It's her place. Okay, let's see. What's your name? Alicia Spafford. It's Spafford, S-P-A-F-F-O-R-D? Yes, sir. I bet people mispronounce that all the time, don't they? So um, this is case number 2021-MM5797. And the charge is battery. And it's alleged to be an incident of dating violence. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. You do qualify for the PD. Would you like for me to appoint the PD to, to uh, represent you? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll do that. PD is appointed. And what's your name, sir? Antoine Livingstone. Uh, 
Anton Livingstone. Got it. You are the named victim here. So let's let's talk. First of all, she qualifies for pretrial release. You heard me earlier talking to some of the uh, people over there about that. Yes, sir. But how do you feel about her being released that way? She can be released. I didn't call the cops on her at all. Okay, but so, you're okay with her being yeah, released I'm without afraid, posting I'm a bond? Okay with her. And the two of you live together? Yes. So uh, how do you feel about uh, where you want her to go when she gets out she of can, jail? She can return, but there's no more drinking. I, I didn't hear the last part. There's no more drinking. No more drinking? Yeah. I'll order her not to drink. Uh, there's no more drinking. I'll order it, and then you're, the, you you got to be you got to be the police. If she drinks, you're the one that has to let nine one one know she's violating the court order. All right. Understand? All right. There's no drinking. That's what started the whole thing. I saw it. Fireball whiskey. Fireball. It sounds like something to get you fired up. Yeah. Uh. So okay. Anything else you can think of? That's about it. She's okay. perfectly fine without it. A lot of people are like that. Yeah. That's, um, huh. All right, so you qualify for PTR, so I'm going to authorize your release PTR. Now, now listen to these other conditions very closely. I'm going to order that you have no hostile contact with Mr. Livingstone. No fighting, no arguing, none of that. Got it? Mm-hmm. What? Yes, sir. You, do, you know, if you, if you do, and the police come, you'll come back to jail. Understand? Yes, sir. Okay, so no hostile contact, no alcohol, no drugs, uh, unless the drugs are prescribed for you by your own physician, and you're to have no weapons on or about your person. Your Honor, are you going to order random drug and alcohol analysis? Well, I'm... Since she's on PTR? Yeah, we can do that. Why don't I do that? Because with PTR, I can have you randomly tested to see if you're drinking or doing drugs. And if you are, that would be a violation, and shoo, back here you'd come. Understand? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you have any questions? You want to direct them to your attorney. Uh, same thing with your comments, okay? Yes, sir. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Livingstone. You're welcome. So I'm saying the uh, case numbers for the benefit of the court reporters, right? Well, that's not the only place you have to do that. It's just one of those little things you forget. You know, staring you in the face and you forget it anyway. So good morning. What's your name? Stephanos Corollas. All right. Case number is 2017 CF9901. You're being held on a violation of probation in that felony case. Uh, the violations alleged are that you um, picked up a new criminal charge, trespass, that you failed to report to the probation officer office on 6-12-21, um, that you changed your residence without the consent of probation, and... You were instructed to report on June 16th uh, for a date of July 12th, which you failed to do. So, do you understand those violations? Yes, sir. All right. Well, that court wants you held no bond on the violation. Uh, I don't see a, uh affidavit of insolvency. Is it your intent, or do you already have a private attorney? I have a private attorney, sir. Okay. So, you're not going to ask for the public defender? No. All right. You know the drill. Anything you got to say or any questions you want to ask, you want to direct those to your attorney. Can you tell me who your private attorney is? Warren Lindsay. Warren Lindsay. Okay, known him for a million years. It, no bond. No bond. Okay, well, Mr. Lindsay is who you need to talk to. Yes, sir. Good luck. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Warren Lindsay ain't cheap. Let's see, next case number is uh, 
2020 CF12673. And your name, sir? Christopher Cooper. Mr. Cooper, you too are being held on a violation of probation. In that felony case, the violations alleged are um, fail to report to the probation office on July 26th uh, or July 27th, that you failed to undergo a mental health evaluation as ordered by the court, and that you changed your residence without the consent of your probation office. Do you understand those violations? And looks like you qualify for the public defender. Would you like for me to appoint them for you? Yeah. All right, I'll appoint the PD to represent you. Um, he's currently being held no bond. He's classified as a violent felony offender of special concern. So the court is without jurisdiction to modify the no bond status. So you'll be held no, bo no bond until there's an order entered by the court where the probation violation is pending. Do you understand? Okay. Good luck. All right, next case number is 2012-CF-631. And your name, sir? Ira Maldonado. Mr. Maldonado, you're being held on a violation of probation in that felony case. And violations alleged are that you associated with uh, any person engaged in criminal activity uh, and that you associated with a person that was engaged in criminal activity. Now, the court who signed the affidavit has ordered that you be held no bond and you two are a violent felony offender of special concern. So I don't see an affidavit of insolvency. Is it your intent to talk to a private attorney, sir? At this moment, no. Huh? At this moment, no. He did he, have the PD previously under underlying. Did he? Okay. Well, you had the PD previously. You want me to appoint him? Last time, so I didn't. You uh, want me to appoint the PD for you? Sure. Yes, sir. That would okay. be great. I'll appoint him for you. Thank you. But you're going to be held no bond until that court where the VOP is pending uh, orders otherwise. Okay. No problem. Good luck. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, next case number, 2019 CF 7840. And your name, sir? I'll keep Morris, sir. Mr. Morris, you are being held on a violation of probation. Violations alleged. Well, I don't have the list of violations alleged. He had a new law offense of fleeing and attempting to elude on... Is it a on view? Yeah, it's an on view, isn't it? On view, it's an on view violation of probation because of your um, uh, being charged with a new offense or picked up on a new offense. And uh, uh, you do qualify for the public defender. Do you understand that? Do you want me to appoint the PD for you to represent you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, you're going to be held no bond on the on view violation pending further order of the court in Division 22. And I've appointed the PD for you, so that's who you'll be talking to getting ready for that. You'll probably be back in front of the court here uh, in courtroom three next week. All right? Next week. Next week, probably. Yeah. Yes, Good sir. luck. Thank Didn't you. I see you yesterday? Saw me yesterday. yesterday. Uh, I thought I recognized your arm thing. Yeah. Okay, well, good luck with that. I just remember seeing him. I don't remember what I, I don't remember what I saw him about. I, you know, it's like names. You know, I know a million people, and I can't say their name to save my life. It's a horrible thing. I know it's horrible. Uh, next case number is what is it? Twenty ten CF one three nine eight two. What's your name? Louis Velasquez. Mr. Velasquez, you're being held on a violation of probation. And the violations alleged are fail to report to probation as directed on June 13th of 2017, 
uh, June, July, all in 17. Uh, fail to pay cost supervision and fail to pay $20 a month toward restitution. Uh, do you understand all that? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Well, let's see. You do qualify for the public defender. Would you like for me to appoint them? Yes. All right. I'll appoint them for you. Uh, the warrant says hold you no bond. So I'll stay your status at no bond on that. And uh, I've appointed the PD for you. So any questions or comments you have, you want to direct those to your attorney. Yes, sir. Understand? Yes, I do. Good luck. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Next case number is 2020 CF, no, that's CT, 722. And what's your name, sir? It's George Rosales. All right. Do you pronounce it George yes. Rosales? Okay. Well, let's see. You're being held on a violation of probation out of Division 84. Let me see if we got you a PD. You do qualify for the PD, so... There are a couple of matters I need to talk to you about. Um, qualifying for the PD, would you like for me to appoint the PD for you on these cases? Yes, please. All right, I'll appoint the public defender as to all the cases. You got a violation of probation in Division 84, which appears to be a on-view violation of probation um, based on the new charges. Let's see, you're out on bond on a possession of cocaine from 2020. And you picked up a new offense, driving while license suspended. Your Honor, I believe the underlying uh, probation was a DUI. Was what? He was on probation for a DUI when he picked up the DUI. Offense. Okay. All right. Okay. It's an on view. Well, finding probable cause for the new charge, the driving while license suspended. Um, I'll stay your bond in that case at $500. Uh, I'm going to take no action on this out on bond case because it's kind of old. I'm not sure if that's even still active. It is, Your Honor. But as to the violation of probation, uh, I'm also going to set a bond on that. You, there's no reason Thank for you. me not to under the circumstances. You're not a Your Honor, class, classified as a violent felony offender of special. State would object. He's not entitled to bond. He just pled to a DUI on. January 25th of this year, right. he failed to do interlock, and he was driving on a DUI suspension. Well, why would he not be entitled to a bond? On a violation of probation? Yeah. It's a misdemeanor violation. Because you're not automatically entitled to a bond on a VOP. Well, it's not automatic until I say it is, so there's nothing automatic about it, but on a uh, misdemeanor VOP, on view VOP, um, it's a different circumstance. Understood, because we don't even know if they're going to violate him yet. You know, there's so many things we don't know at this point that uh, with an underlying misdemeanor case and an on view because of a new arrest, then I think he's entitled to a bond under those circumstances. So I'm going to set his bond on the violation of probation at $2,000. And um, then you have the $500 bond on the driving while license suspended. You're going to be ordered not to operate any vehicle that requires a license as a condition of your release. Violate that one again and come back here, and I'll be all about what the state's saying. That'll be no bond, you understand? Yes, sir. Okay, and I'm taking no action on the case you're out on bond on. Thank you. Yeah, if you want to, wait a second, sir, come back. Council, if you want to enter a denial on the VOP at this point, we can give them a VOP date. That's fine, Your Honor. We'll enter a denial on the uh, violation of probation. Okay. It's going to be Division 84 VOP status, September the 24th at 9 a.m. and 4 B. September 24th, you said? What's your next court date? Pre-trial, do you see anything coming through yet from Orange County? Okay, next case number is uh, 
2020 CT 5434. And uh, what's your name, sir? My name is Ryan Vassell. All right, Mr. Vassell, you are, you're here on a violation of probation. That's in 2020 CT 261. And the violations alleged are uh, so, uh, failed to keep appointments with probation April, May, and May of 2021, absconded from the court's jurisdiction, current whereabouts unknown, failed to pay cost of supervision. So uh, the court who signed that affidavit of violation has ordered you held no bond. The reason, there's a good reason, you absconded. You didn't show up where you were supposed to, the way you were ordered to. So I'll stay your status on that at no bond. Uh, and then you have a VOP in uh, 2020 CT 5434. Wasn't that the one I just did? Yes, no, 261 two, and 5434. 5434 is a separate case. Same allegations that you absconded. Also, same result, a warrant that says no bond. And because you absconded, I'll stay your status. No bond on that. And uh, did I appoint the PD for him? Yeah, I'm, my intent is, if you would like, I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Yes, sir. Okay. You, got, you want that? Yes, sir. So you want to enter a denial, counsel? We can give him a VOP date? We'll enter a denial, Your Honor, yes. Okay, he's going to have um, two different divisions. The first division is Division 61. For which, status. For which case? Um, 261. Okay. It's VOP status, September the 10th at 11 a.m. Case number 2020-CT-5434 is Division 85, and the VOP status is September the 23rd at 9 a.m. in 4A. All right, sir. Your best friend, your attorney. Good luck. Okay, next case number is 2021 MM5836. And uh, what's your name? Fishane. And your last name? Boyd. Boyd, Miss Boyd. You're charged with battery. It's charged as a misdemeanor battery. And um, ah, the updated thing says you qualify for PTR. So you're the girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I read the affidavit. I do find probable cause for the charge of battery. And um, you do qualify for what's called pretrial release, but the problem is we got no victim. Without a victim, I can't really release you that way. So having found probable cause for it, and like your co-defendant, I don't see an affidavit of insolvency. Do you intend to talk to a private attorney about this? Um. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'm not for sure. I'm new to this. I'm sorry. You're not. You're not what? I'm not for sure. I don't know what that means. Well, I mean, you have an option. You you charged with a crime, and anybody in the United States of America charged with a crime is entitled to have an attorney represent them. Okay. Now it could be an attorney that you hire privately, or it could be an attorney that's appointed by the court, which could be the public defender or the conflicts attorney. And so what I'm asking you is, do you intend to go with a private attorney or are you going to be asking for the public defender? Um, most likely the public. Okay. So I'll go ahead and, well, I'll I do think a private. I appointed I'll the public defender for your co defense. So we're probably going to have to appoint the conflicts attorney in your case. Oh, Your Honor, uh, the PD has to be appointed and the PD has to conflict off for it to go to RCC. Ah, they've got a system for that, huh? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, well, I'll oh, go public. ahead and appoint the PD, but... One of you is going to wind up getting the conflicts attorney. Your bond is going to be set at um, $500. Okay. Now, you're going to be ordered to have no contact with the victim, no return to the scene of the offense. Okay. No you're to consume no alcohol, no drugs, not prescribed for you by your own physician. You're going to have no weapons on or about your person. You're going to have no contact with any witnesses okay. in the case. So are we clear? Yes, sir. Your Honor, there was also an order in Ms. Diverse case of no contact with a co-defendant. You got yep. the same no thing contact with the co-defendant as well. Huh. You were saying? Is that what you were going to say? The state stole your thunder. 
As long as it's covered. It's all right. She's used to it. She's worked with me too many years not to be used to stuff like that. Okay. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. I like the hair. Thank you. So I've got a thing about hair. Depends how I don't have any. Always have had. I don't know. Um, so next case number is 2021 MM5809. And uh, what's your name, sir? Conklin Charles. Conklin? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, you know, the charge, Mr. Conklin, is petty theft. And uh, I think this was the uh, Walgreens one. Yep. Okay. I read the affidavit. There is probable cause for that. And uh, you do qualify for the public defender, sir. Would you like for me to uh, appoint the PD for you? Yes, sir. I'll do that. And... Um, your Honor, there's no offer at this time due to it being enhanceable. Okay. They would ask that you just set a bond. Yes, ma'am. I got it. So, um, okay. Bond is $250. Now, you are ordered not to return to the Walgreens at 5702 Lee Vista Boulevard as a condition of your release. You're to have no contact with any victim or victims or witnesses from that location. Do you understand? Yes, sir. All right. Any questions you have, you want to direct them to your attorney, okay? Good luck. And next case number, what do we got here? Uh, 2021 MM5822. So what's your name, sir? Uh, your Honor, my name is Jamal Thompson. Well, good morning, Mr. Thompson. Good morning, Your Honor. Mr. Thompson, you are charged with um, resisting merchandise recovery and petty theft. Yes, Your Honor. And I read the affidavit, do find probable cause for those charges. I, I do not see an affidavit of insolvency um, so that I can consider whether or not to appoint the public defender. Do you understand? I do understand. Are you? Um, no, I said I'll represent myself. Okay. Have you ever done that before? No, but it sounds like a good idea. Okay. Well, you understand that um, there's a little drill we, you and I got to go through if you tell me you're going to represent yourself. Oh, no. I, I really just want to, like, get it over with, do whatever, you know. Like, well, you're I, not going to just get it over with today, yeah. so. Not today, but I'm. Maybe just, you should reconsider your representing yourself. Yeah, I do. I, re, I could reconsider. I thought like signing this paper. Like maybe go maybe. ahead and have the public defender represent. Yeah, you. let's do that. Okay, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and appoint the public defender for you. All right, appreciate you. And now you're out on bond. Yep. On a trespass charge from July. You had uh, a trespass and a petty theft, eleven $1 hundred dollars in bonds. Goodness. Okay. As to the uh, new charges. Finding probable cause, I'll set your bond at $500 on the resisting merchandise recovery, $100 on the petty theft. You're ordered uh, not to return to, I guess that's the Walmart at 3101 West Princeton. Yes, Your Honor. And uh, you're to have no contact with the victims or any witnesses from that location. Thank you, Your Honor. As to the case that you're out on bond on, um, I'll revoke your bonds on that one. I'm going to set new bonds on the trespass charge. I'll set a bond of $500 on the retail theft charge or petty theft charge. I'll set an additional bond of $1,500. And I've appointed the PD for you, so I think our business is concluded, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Good luck. Good luck. Good morning. Your name? Angelica Escalante. Good morning. Escalante? Yes, sir. Ah. In 2021 MO969, you're charged with uh, having had an open container of alcohol. Do you understand that charge? I do, Your Honor. If the state wants to make an offer to resolve it today, do you? Uh, would you like to hear that? Yes, sir. Okay. Your Honor, I've been authorized on the city's behalf to offer a withhold credit time served. With, uh, so the offer is... Uh, withhold of adjudication. Do you know what that means? 
It's not going to be on my record or something along that. Yeah, it doesn't go on your record as a conviction. Okay, great. It goes on your record as a oops. Thank you. So, and then um, you'd be sentenced to time served, which is time you've been here, and ordered to pay the costs associated with the case. Okay. You want to do that? Yes, sir. All right, raise your right hand for me. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you shall give in this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so you're entering a plea. You can put your hand down. What plea are you entering to these to this charge? No contest. All right. You believe that's in your best interest? Yes, sir. Understand by doing that, you waive your right to have a trial? I understand. No jury's ever going to hear the facts and decide whether you're guilty or innocent. Okay. You okay with that? Yes. All right. Uh, I'll find the plea is free and voluntary. Accept your plea. I'm going to withhold adjudication of guilt, sentence you to time served, order that you pay the costs associated with the case. We'll give you some paper before you go that tells you what those are. How's 180 days to pay those costs sound? Okay. That work for you? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, good luck. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. No. Not today. You know, I was trying to download a Pink Floyd album the other day off iTunes. Um, Wish You Were Here. You ever heard it? Great album. It's only five songs. I could not get the cotton picking thing to download. I had downloaded everything but the two versions of um, Shine On. And, um, and while I'm in the process of doing all that and trying to straighten it out, my iPod crashes. So now I got nothing to down. I mean, it's downloaded, but the, the thing won't work. And I'm totally at a loss as to what to do with it. You know, I have kids that should be able to straighten this out for me, but no. So let's see. What's your name, sir? Raymond Ferguson. How are you, Mr. Ferguson? Good. How are you doing? All right. Well, sir, you are charged with camping. You understand that charge? Not really. All I do is lay down, put my head on my backpack. You know. Yeah. It's, um, it's confusing, I know. What's the case number? 2021 MO970. The way the ordinance is written, uh, that does constitute camping under the ordinance. Now, whether I like that or don't like that or agree with it or don't agree with it is beside the point because that's the law. So you know in the future, you know, just that can get you arrested, right? Yes, sir. So you feel like you understand what you're charged with now? Yes. All right. You think you might like to resolve it if the state wants to make an offer to resolve it? Yes, sir. Okay. I've been authorized on the city's behalf to offer a withhold of adjudication and credit time served. So do you understand that, a withhold and time served? Do you understand what that means, a withhold in time served? Yes, sir. Okay, would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you shall give in this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. All right. Now, you're entering a plea of no con. You can put your hand down, sir. You're entering a plea of no contest to the uh, charge of camping. Is that correct? Yes. And do you believe it's in your best interest to do that? Yes. Okay. Uh, any questions or comments you have? Um, you're going to direct to your attorney because, well, no, I didn't appoint the PD in your case. Okay. I just spoke to him as a friend of the court. I'll find that it's uh, your plea is free and voluntary, sir. I'll accept your plea of no contest. Uh, withhold adjudication of guilt and should a time served. There are court costs associated with this, which you'll be required to pay, but I'll give you a year to pay them. And uh, you can also check with the clerk's office. There may be a program you can work out something where you work those off instead of having to go out of pocket for it, okay? All right, good luck to you, sir. Next case number is 2021-MO-971. Uh, good morning, sir. What's your name? Uh, 
One, uh, Billy Higdon. All right. Good morning, Mr. Higdon. Uh, you're charged with camping too, sir. Do you understand that charge? I, I can hear you, Judge. I said you're you're charged with camping. Yes. You understand that? Yes. Okay. Um, if the state's inclined to extend an offer on that today, would you like to hear it? Yes. Okay. I've been authorized on the city's behalf to offer a withhold of adjudication and credit time served. All right. So the offer is withhold of adjudication and time served. You want to do that? Yes. Thank you. Yep, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Pardon? It's all right. Can not you, get you the judge. I can hear. Your Honor, okay. can you get the so, headphones? Your Honor, there's headphones right there. there. Yeah, we probably need to do that. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, thank you. So, Mr. Higdon, the state is offering to resolve the case today if you want to enter a plea of no contest to the charge of camping with a withhold of adjudication and time served. Yes, sir. You want to do that? Yes. All right, raise your right hand for me. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you shall give in this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. So you're entering a plea of no contest to camping, correct? Correct. Do you believe it's in your best interest to do that? I do. All right. And, um, okay, I'll find your plea is free and voluntary. I'll accept your plea and withhold adjudication of guilt. Sentence should have time served. There are court costs associated with it, which I'm going to give you a year to pay, or you can certainly contact the clerk's office, and if they have a program, you can work out maybe a workout schedule on that, okay? Okay. All right, well, good luck to you, sir. All right, thank you, Judge. He remembers me from years ago. He does. He knew when he came through the door it was going to be a good morning. Yeah. All right, next case numbers 2021 MO972. Uh, what's your name, sir? Uh, Richard Joseph Versace. Pardon me? Richard Joseph Versace. Hey. You've got a um, Ron, Donald John Richard. Mental health. Mental health, okay. So um, how about if I appoint the public defender for him? We'll, and, wave, uh, we'll wave Mr. Richard's appearance. All right. Case, He's, uh, the charge is open container. There's a bond of 250. And so I'll stay the bond at 250. And... Um, no action on the cases he's out on bond on. There we go. I'm treating these little cards here as if they're a command. Don't reset anything. All right, you understand that, sir? No. What's your name? Uh, Richard Versace, right? Yes, sir. Sorry. Got confused. Uh, this is case number... What is it? 2021 MO973. The charge is camping. Yes. You understand that? Yes. All right. Uh, would you like to hear an offer to resolve that today? Uh, yes. Okay. I've been authorized on the city's behalf to offer a withhold of adjudication and credit time served. You could almost just email those offers in, <laughs> not even have to come to court. Just one standard email. So, um, all right, sir, you want to raise your right hand for me? You swear or affirm the testimony you should give in this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. So uh, that's what you got. The state's offering a withhold time served if you wish to enter a plea of no contest. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Do you want to do that? No contest. Okay. So go ahead and say the words. No contest. No, no contest. Sir. There you go. All right. I'll accept your plea. Find it's free and voluntary. Withhold adjudication of guilt. Uh, sentence you to time served, require you to pay the costs associated with the case, give you one year to pay those or work something out with the clerk's office if possible. Good luck. You're welcome, sir. And next case number is 2021 MO974. What's your name, sir? Eddie Williamson. Good morning, Mr. Williamson. Good morning. 
You're charged with camping. Yes. Did, you already knew that, didn't you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, would you like to hear an offer to resolve it? Yes. Okay. I've been authorized on the city's behalf to offer a withhold of adjudication and credit term served. All right. So if you want to enter a plea of no contest, um, the state's comfortable on behalf of the city with a withhold of adjudication, credit for time served, and then the costs, which I'll give you some time to pay. What do you think? Uh, I plead no contest. All right. And um, you feel like it's in your best interest to do that? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So let's see. I'll uh, accept a plea, find it free and voluntary, withhold adjudication of guilt, sentence you to time served, order that you pay the costs associated with the case, give you a year to pay those, or work out whatever you can with the uh, clerk's office on that. Okay? Good luck. And let's see, my next case is 2021 CT858. That's um, Nelly Ferreira. And when I did mine um, back in the early 90s, we did it at the Marriott downtown. So it was like everything you could possibly want open bar, you name it. That's nice. And uh, it was a um, thing. Not a thing I wanted to do, but. No, I haven't attended one since I attended my own. It was, um, you know, some people like to socialize, some people don't. My idea of socializing is going out in the pasture and spending time with a horse and a donkey. Oh, yeah, they're, they're very gentle creatures with the donkey. They just as soon kill you as look at you, but. Yep. Yeah. I grew up in areas like that where you know you found yourself out amongst the wild critters periodically. And uh, yep. Oh, we used to get that. I didn't live far from the stockyards in Oklahoma City, and occasionally a bunch of cows would escape. And you'd look up, and they would just be walking down your street. I thought that was great. We used to go out and try to herd them with our bicycles. Cows are not cooperative. Okay, let's see. First case number is uh, 2021 CF8271. And uh, what's your name, sir? Titus. Uh, your full name? Titus Dodd. All right. Uh, Mr. Dodd, let's see what I got here. I've got a uh, warrant. Uh, that alleges the offense of um, robbery with a firearm. Uh, the judge who reviewed that warrant found probable cause. That would be Judge Gibson. And uh, let's see. Uh, it looks like you qualify for the public defender. Do you understand that? Yeah, but I'm finna get a get a uh, lawyer. So you're gonna get a private attorney? Yeah. Okay. I. I'm missing a page here. Let's see. Oh, that's the case. Oh, no, there it is. So currently, um, he's being held no bond, no victim contact, no weapons, firearms, or ammunition, no witness contact. So, stay. Yes, Your Honor. State's asking that you hold him no bond pending an Arthur hearing, as this is a punishable by life offense. Um, and probable cause was already found since it was a warrant. And due to him being held no bond, if you do find that, State would ask that you go ahead and point the PD just to go ahead and get motion started for potentially an Arthur hearing to get him bonded at a later time. Well, um, 
So would you be interested in having me appoint the PD for you now, and then when you get your private attorney, the PD can bow out? Yeah, you could do that. Okay. So I'll go ahead and appoint the public defender for you. Is there you. any way you can put a motion in for me to go to prison now, though, and I can come back on this case? Uh, it's not usually the way it works. Usually you pick up new charges here, you know, or you get transported back for something like this. Um, depending on how the case goes, they're going to want to hold you here until it's time to resolve the case, either through trial, plea, or whatever it is. But uh, that's something you can talk to your attorney about, okay? All right. So PD's appointed. I'll stay status of no bond. And uh, that'll do it. Thank you, sir. You got the no contact with victims, witnesses, all that stuff. It's in the warrant. Okay. Ah, oh, thank you, man. Yeah, I was wondering about that when I saw the qualified for PT. <laughs> All right, next case number is 2021-CF9782. Uh, uh, good morning. Good, still morning. Good morning, sir. Tell me your name. Timothy Charles, sir. All right, Mr. Charles, you are charged um, with uh, possession of cocaine with intent, possession of a controlled substance, possession of uh, MDMA slash ecstasy, possession of drug paraphernalia, and possession of fentanyl. Now, do you understand those charges? Yes, sir. Your Honor, right. uh, as to the PC on the possession of cocaine with intent to sell, can I be heard on sure. probable cause? I haven't appointed you, actually. If you can uh, he didn't fill out an affidavit of insolvency. Let me ask him a couple things, and then we'll see if we can get yes, it. Yes, So... I don't see an affidavit of insolvency here um, so that I can see if you uh, qualify for the public defender. Um, I did you, filled one out. Did you have something else in mind? So you did fill one out? Yeah. Before Your intent was to ask for the public defender? Yes. Okay. Then I'll go ahead and appoint the PD. So go ahead, counsel. Yes, Your Honor. As to the amount, um, I think it was 0 0.3 grams uh, in the arrest affidavit. I have case law that suggests that that's a very small amount. Uh, to justify an intent uh, to sell conviction. Um, I know there were scales and other paraphernalia found, but he is also charged with possession of drug paraphernalia. paraphernalia. Uh, but as to the amount, I, I find it so small that I would only find probable cause for possession of cocaine. State? Your Honor, the case that he's referring to is a case that says amount and money alone cannot amount to intent to sell or deliver. In this case, we have fentanyl in the amount of 1.5 grams, which on the street value, that's approximately 15 people's worth. 0.1 gram is what's what's known as like a usable dose for one person. Um, we have the crack cocaine, which is approximately 3 grams, which is approximately 3 people's worth. Then the MDMA, which is approximately a gram. And then 11 of the capris... Capristol doll pills, which arguably could be 11 people's worth. Uh, his case law states that amount, en amount and the amount of money cannot be enough for intent to sell or deliver. But in this case, the amounts, I would argue, are enough. It's multiple people's worth. It was located in separate baggies, all packaged in multiple baggies, and the six skills. So there is an addition of sale. That case says there's no other addition of sale other than amount and cash. In this case, we have multiple baggies, an amount, and scales found throughout the house. So the state would contend that there is enough for intent to sell on uh, the count one. Okay. Your Honor, may I approach with the case that sure. we're referring to? Thanks, sir. Yeah, I'm familiar with that case. I'm familiar with that case. Okay. All right, I'm going to fine PC for possession with intent. Uh, bonds are going to be set at $15,000 as to count one or stayed at $15,000. Uh, $150 each as to two and three, $100 as to four, $150 as to count five. Sir, you're going to be ordered to have um, uh, no drugs or alcohol as a condition of your release, no weapons on or about your person, uh, no contact with any witnesses, and... Um, 
that I think will do it. So, good luck. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. What's your name? Mary Delise Cosby. All right. Case number 2020 CF10037. Got a failure to appear. Uh, says you failed to appear on a cocaine possession charge for a trial management conference on April 15th of this year. Yes, I that think court that. issued a capius and ordered you held no bond on the failure to appear. Now, did you have a lawyer in that case? Uh, no, I thought that that case was dropped. Um, yes. no, me, it wasn't. Me and the person um, that... Uh, Ma'am, it wasn't room. dropped. It's still there. Okay. And, and an order that you're not to have a bond until you appear in front of the judge in Division 22. So you understand that? The division that you didn't appear in front of? Mm -hmm. Okay. These are things you should talk to your lawyer about. Yeah, I never got I never got a lawyer for this case. Okay, Remember well the, the PD has previously appointed yeah. Mr. Jerkins. Yeah, you have the PD, so you have an attorney. Uh, and I'll reappoint the PD to make sure you've got an attorney. But for right now, everybody's hands are pretty much tied. You're gonna be held no bond until the court in division twenty two says otherwise. Good luck. Hmm. There we go. All right, next case number is 2021 CF 9758. What's your name? Jan Dupuy. Du Dupuy? Dupuy. Dupuy. I think I have some relatives with the same last name. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, my dad is John William Dupuy. <laughs> That's eh, not the right name. Well, it's case number 2021 CF 9758. And Ms. Dupuy, you are charged with burglary of a dwelling with an assault or battery therein. That is a punishable by life felony, by the way. It show on his cameras that I Hold didn't on. do it. Aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, uh, criminal mischief, and resisting without violence. Now, do you understand the charges? Yeah, I also understand half of them are false. And it uh, looks like you qualify for the public defender. Would you like for me to appoint the public defender to represent you? Yes, please. Okay. I'll do that. Let me look at something here. Yeah. Got it, All right. And um, so um, she's being held no bond on the PBL. So state, care to be heard on that? Yes, Your Honor. Given that it is a punishable by life offense, state is asking that you hold her no bond pending an Arthur hearing downtown. What? Counsel, I've appointed your office um, to represent her in the matter. Care to be heard on the uh, bond on count one? No argument, but she is entitled to that full Arthur hearing downtown on her time. Okay. So I'll, I'll stay her status on no bond. No uh, bond. The bond on the aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, uh, that bond I'm going to reduce to 150. Criminal mischief, uh, 100. Resisting without violence, 100. So, do you understand? Am I allowed to bond out or not? No. Your Honor, State would ask for the condition of no contact with victims or witnesses. Yeah, yeah no, and custody. order no contact with yeah, any victims or witnesses. Nah. Arr. Arr. In a good mood. All right, good morning. Good morning. Um, let's see, this is... Case number 2021 CF 9779, charge is burglary of a conveyance. What is your name, please? Samantha Gibbs. All right. Ms. Gibbs, do you understand what you're charged with, burglary of a conveyance? Um, it was a misunderstanding. Okay, I'm not asking you to explain yes, it. Yes, sir, I do. Okay. Now, you do qualify for the public defender. Do you understand that? Yes. Would you like for me to appoint the PD for you? Sure, yes. Yes. Okay. I'll go ahead and appoint the public defender for you. Um, having read the affidavit, I do find probable cause for the charge. And uh, the bond is uh, $3,500. You're going to be ordered to have no contact with uh, any victim or victims or any witnesses 
as a condition of your release. Uh, Can I ask about early pre-trial release? About PTR? Yes. Yeah, you don't qualify it. You got some kind of an out-of-county hold on you. Okay, that's fine. So you're just kind of stuck. Okay, until the bond is paid? Yes, ma'am. Okay. But then, of course, as long as the out-of-county hold, you bond here, just going to hold you for the other county anyway. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Next case number is uh, 2021 CF 9768. What is your name, please? Ebony. Ebony Gordon. What is it? Ebony Gordon. Ebony Gordon, Your Honor. I don't have a case on. We got no case on this person. Ms. Okay, Gordon. I have a hold. It's 17 or 21 CF 9650. We got no paper on it at all. Permission to approach? Sure. I bonded. Said he had a hold of some sort. We'll let counsel figure out what he's being held for. They said when my mom called. I'll talk to your lawyer, sir. We never seen the deal. The surety bonded on the bird dwelling criminal mission. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, next case is 2021 CF 9768. And uh, your name, sir? Mark Hill, Jamal Graham. All right, Mr. Graham, um, you're charged with uh, robbery by sudden snatching and grand theft third degree. Do you understand those charges? Yes, sir. I see that you qualify for the public defender. Would you like for me to appoint the PD for you? Yes, sir. All right. I'll do that. Appoint the PD at this time. Uh, indicate that I do find probable cause for the charges. Uh, bond on the robbery charge is $1,000, $150 on the grand theft. And um, you are not to return to 1491 South Rio Grande Avenue, Bald Head Grocery. I got to go there. I'm going over there today after I finish. Uh, and uh, you're uh, not to have any contact with any victims or any witnesses as a condition of release as well. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Any questions? You want to direct them to your attorney, sir? Well, wait a minute. I don't have a PD affidavit here. Yes, I do. You do qualify and the PD is appointed. So any questions you have, you need to direct them to your attorney. Yes, sir. Good luck. Just say on there that he's a veteran. No? Let me see. It doesn't say veteran. Does military veteran? No. Okay. Sound like, do y'all still ask the question back there if somebody's a veteran? When they're being interviewed, do they still ask them if they're a veteran? Yes. Okay, this is case number 2021 CF 9778. Uh, your name, please? Norkey Jefferson. All right, Mr. Jefferson, you are being held on charges of possession of cannabis with intent and possession of drug paraphernalia. Do you understand those charges? Yes, sir. All right. Um, I'm not seeing an affidavit of insolvency. Do you intend to talk to a private attorney? No. Uh, I, I wasn't uh, given no attorney. You aren't you going to represent yourself? Yes, sir. You think that's the best decision you've made all year? Nah. It's not a good decision. I mean, you're entitled to an attorney, sir, because you're charged with a crime. 
And the um, that cannabis charge here is a felony charge, which could result in state prison time. Uh, I don't know about you, but if I've got to face the potential of going to state prison and there's a lawyer out there that I can get, I want the lawyer. So if you cannot afford a lawyer, I can appoint the public defender to represent you. Yes, sir. You want to do that? Yes, sir. Okay. So I'll go ahead and appoint the public defender, find probable cause on Your both Honor. the charges. Your Honor, as, as to probable cause, I'm using the same case law. Um, although there were nine baggies, uh, it could be for personal use as there was no scale or cash or evidence of sale or transaction uh, in the arrest affidavit. Um, I would just have you find PC for possession of cannabis. Your Honor, this case officer. I'm, I'm comfortable with, the, uh, with intent. The, the nine baggies, I think, puts it there where a reasonable person would uh, consider nine baggies to be a little excessive for one person. You're also and, uh, as a result, I'm going to find the PC for in, with intent. Okay, coupled with the hand-to-hand -hand transaction observed by the officer? Huh? Coupled with the hand-to-hand -hand transaction that was observed from the officer? That helps. Um, but the bond is $1,000 on count one, 100 on count two. Uh, you're ordered to have uh, consume no alcohol or have no drugs on or about your person unless they're prescribed for you by your own physician. No contact with any witnesses as a condition of release. Uh, I got a question. Okay, so, you probably want to ask your attorney. So, uh, All right, thank you, sir. Hearing's concluded. Next case number is 2021 CF 3427. And what's your name, sir? Brian Johnson. All right, Mr. Johnson, uh, you're being held uh, on a capius that was issued when you failed to appear for trial on the 9th of this month on a possession of methamphetamine. And that court has ordered you held no bond pending further order of that court. And then you have one in 2021 MO365, failure to appear on a trespass. That was for arraignment, 722.21. You got a $500 bond on that. You're no bonded on the felony, the methamphetamine. You got a $500 bond on the uh, misdemeanor. And I suspect if you got all the way to trial with the one case that you had an attorney, was it a public defender? I was in the hospital. Um, okay, I understand. That's what you're going to talk to your lawyer about. Um, did you have a lawyer in the case? I had a public defender. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to make sure you're public defendered on both of them. And your public defender, what's going to happen is your public defender is going to bring it to the court's attention with any evidence you had that you were in the hospital when you failed to appear, and that's the way they're going to straighten it out. Okay? Sure. Good luck. Hmm. Okay, next case number, or one of the case numbers here is uh, 2021 CF 9479. And what's your name, sir? Travis Marshall. I didn't hear you? Travis Marshall. Travis Marshall, okay. Well, what do we got here? You got a possession of uh, MDMA ecstasy. That's pursuant to a warrant uh, that found probable cause and set your bond at $1,000. And let's see, 9479, yep. Well, that's a whole lot of paperwork for one thing. So you first of all, you do have a bond. of $1,000 on the warrant. You do qualify for the public defender, sir. Would you like for me to appoint the public defender for you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Okay. You said yes? Yes, sir. All right, I'll appoint the PD for you. I'll stay your bond at $1,000, sir. He um, might want to be aware you're on state probation, There's which been means... There's an on-view file, Your Honor. Huh? There has been an on-view file. Okay. So an on-views file? Yeah, he'll be seen on it tomorrow. Okay, so tomorrow you'll be back to talk about the on-view violation of probation that's being filed, all right? Okay. That means if you postpone today, you're not going anywhere till you get the other. I'd wait to see what happens with the other one before I threw the money on the table for the bond, okay? Yes, sir. All right. And uh, PD is appointed, so good luck, sir. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, next case number is 2021 CF 9754. And what is your name, sir? Keith Meisenberg. All right. Mr. Meisenberg, you are charged with uh, possession of synthetic cannabinoids and resisting officer without violence. Do you understand those charges? Uh, I do, but the one I'm not going to accept, uh, I mean, it depends on whatever. I, I'll reopen within 30 days on a lawsuit on the one. Then you've also got an open container charge. Uh, oh, kind of, not really. So, uh, you uh, probably going to want to have a lawyer here, huh? How about it? Oh, because of what happened to me, yes. Public defender? Well... You want me to appoint the public defender, or are you going to... I'm, I'm getting one appointed now. If I need a private one, I'll go that route. Okay, so, all right. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you on both cases. Find probable cause on the uh, synthetic cannabinoids. Uh, the bond will be stated $1,000, $100 on the resisting charge, and uh, we'll make it $100 on the open container charge. So, any questions or comments you have, you want to direct to your attorney, uh, yes, sir? Uh, that that's already been done. Good luck. Nothing happened. Hmm. Okay. Next case number is twenty twenty one CF nine seven seven one. And uh, what's your name, sir? Mm -hmm. Come on up there to the microphone. There you go. And your, what's your name? Wilson. Not Juanita Christina Miller. Refused. Refused? Okay, well, let's see. What do we got? Uh, 2021 CF 9771. She's charged with possession of cocaine, battery on a law enforcement officer, resisting with violence. Resisting without violence, trespass on property after warning. Now, having reviewed the affidavit, I do find probable cause for each of those. Uh, so we start with the possession of cocaine. Bond is going to be set at one fifty, twenty five hundred on the battery on a Leo, um, one fifty on the resisting with violence, one hundred on the resisting without violence, uh, and one hundred on the trespass on property after warning. I will appoint the public defender to represent her, oh. and she'll be ordered to have no contact with any um, victims or witnesses as conditions of release. We'll wait for her parents as well today. Pardon me? If appointed, we'll wait for her parents as well. It was a refusal. Okay, thank you. Um, Your Honor, State would also request a no return to the, uh, it was a hotel, the Ritz-Carlton located at 4012 Central, Florida Parkway. Okay. I'll, I'll so order. And um, let's see. Next up is uh, 2021 CF 2815. What's your name, sir? This, uh, are you looking at Miss Michael Simboli? Yep. Oh, he is? Okay. Well, he's got a violation of a condition of release. Let's see. He's failed to call in. Uh, failed to call in. Uh, failed to call in. So. Uh, 
they failed to report. Yeah. So the uh, warrant that was issued is directed that he be held no bond. I'll stay at it no bond. And um, PD previously? So the public defender's office re representing him previously. I waive his appearance today as well. Your Honor. All right. He's also got a resisting without. That's in uh, 2021 MM 5807. Um, find probable cause for that and um, set that bond at $500. And PD's previously appointed. So there we go. All right. Uh, next case is Joseph Eugene Smith. And that's 2021 258166. That is a huge number. Um, got an out of county hold for Volusia County. Uh, and uh, here you're charged uh, with giving a false name adversely affecting another. Your Honor, that's the name that he falsely gave. It's now Calvester Smith. Yep. So. Joseph Eugene Smith, also known as Calvester J. Smith. I do find probable cause. Bond is set at $1,000. And uh, you do qualify for the public defender, sir. Would you like for me to appoint them for you? Sure. All right. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. And you got those holes out of Volusia County. You know about that. All right. Good luck. Last one is uh, 2021 CF 9785, and that's Carleaf Marquise Troche. Is that you, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Won't you um, say your full name, ma'am? Carleaf Marquise Troche, Jr. Okay. Uh, charges possession of a cocaine with intent. Uh, this is in 2021 CF 9785 and possession of MDMA. Uh, let's see. Okay. Same argument on the intent, counsel? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Predicted my uh, next action. There were no baggies, no scales, no cash. Yeah. Evidence of any other transaction. May have been for personal use. Your Honor, State's argument would be the amounts, 1.5 grams of MDMA is more than a single use, 1.2 of the cocaine is more than single use, and 6.7 of the cannabis is arguably more than more than personal use. The cocaine was also broken into six separate pieces, all of similar size, arguably so it could be sold. It was located with a razor. Um, it was also located in the gas compartment of the car. Um, just kind of indicating a stealthy like delivery, um, that it wasn't located like in his pocket or close to him, so he could use it for personal use. Mm -hmm. I think the paraphernalia that he has with him addresses the issue of with intent. Um, it'd be nice if I was more experienced with what that is, but still. It kind of looks that way. So, counsel, did go ahead. Did you want to say anything else about it? Um, just under the totality of the circumstances, Your Honor, um, I find PC for possession um, lacking the baggies, the scales. The I, I think if you take away the uh, some of the paraphernalia, you you get you win. But you throw the paraphernalia back in, and it appears the paraphernalia being the razor. Yeah, that stuff. Um, your Honor, this is also just a probable cause standard, which is incredibly low, and if he probably mm -hmm. had the intent. I agree. So I'm going to go ahead and stay his bond at $10,000 and find PC for an intent on the cocaine charge, 150 on the MDMA. And um, uh, as far as the public defender is concerned, sir, would you like to have the public defender appointed to represent you? Yes. Yes, sir. You got him. Good luck. Your Honor, is there no drugs or alcohol on that one? Is there an order of no drugs or alcohol? Uh, yeah. You'd say 10,000. No drugs or alcohol. 10. Yeah. Okay. No consumed drugs or alcohol. While you're on a box. Yes, ma'am. 
Okay.